Hey everyone, welcome back. And I pray that you had a fantastic and blessed Christ Mass, which is really how you're supposed to say it. It is the Christ Mass. It is the day that we commemorate as those who are in Christ, the great grace that God has showered upon us in his incarnation. Another way I like to say it is that it is the incarnation celebration. It's what we celebrate when we are actually celebrating it. And so I hope that yours was a blessed one. Today, we're getting close to the end of 2022, right? Got about a week away, a little bit less than a week. And we'll be in 2023. And I was looking back on some things of 2022. And wow, uh, 2022 was a good year for this channel. I mean, we just started in 2021, right? So I had my one year anniversary, August 12th. And so 2021, we gained subscribers. It was a positive and it was great. But in 2022, we went from having like 100 plus subscribers at the beginning of 2022 to where we are today, 13,400 plus subscribers. That is all God. That is the providence of God, in his sovereign hand, building this channel through you. You, you are a blessing. This community could not have been built without your support, without you being moved to say, you know what? I'm gonna do something simple. I'll just hit the subscribe button. And over 13,000 of you did that this year and stayed. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all came and dipped, right? I did lose subscribers this year and everybody does. Everybody who loses subscriber, it's just a part of the YouTube thing. Just, you, you, you will lose subscribers, get used to it. The thing is that do you, do you gain more subscribers than you lose? And this year, eh, well, we did that. <laughs> and my goal for 2022, you know what my goal was? Thousand subscribers. That was my goal. Okay, when, when we blew that out of the water at the beginning of the year, when I made my video in August on the anniversary, I said, okay, well, it'd be nice if we can get 10,000 subscribers. Well, we blew that out of the water as well. And it just keeps being a validation. Well, there's people who want to hear what's being talked about on this channel. And so I press on. So I wanna thank you. Thank you for being part of this community. Thank you for coming in. We're just at the beginning of this, y'all. It's like I said, I have an agenda. This is, I got a seven year plan. And what are we, not even a year and a half into this? Oh man, God is good all the time. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause it's about to go down here on RPG Elite. We've got many things that I have planned. There's other things that we're going to do next year. It's going to be added to the repertoire of things, all RPG Elite. So thank you again very much. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I want to welcome you because this folks is RPG Elite. What's being built here is RPG Elite. This is a place where we put the RP back in the RPG by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture so that you can have a deep, rich experience at the table to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. Today, we are gonna hear from you guys. Viewer comments is how we gonna do this for the last Tuesday of 2022 been a little while since we've done some viewer comments so it's time to pull them out once again and then we'll come back with what you have had to say about some of the things happening here on rpg elite okay folks here we go let's get straight into it with our first comment and this one comes to us from manufactured myth ledger domain from the video, How to Tell a Story, RPG Elite Quality, number eight, part five. And they say, this video was awesome. I'm stunned that with over 10,000 subscribers, I was just recommended your channel within the last hour. 
something must be wrong with the YouTube recommendation algorithms. <laughs> you know how that goes, y'all. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what they're doing? Twerking things. You know, some people talk about their shadow band and all the rest of this stuff. I don't get into all of that. I just make the content and I trust God that whoever finds it, they will stay for a while. I just, the, the people who should stay will stay. That's how I do it. And I just move on. Let's continue with their comment. As an English teacher of 20 years and GM of over 35 years, I'm always looking for new and fresh takes on running games. And it's awesome to find someone who takes the game seriously enough to understand the game for what it is and what it can do. In particular, I love your ideas about plot, elements of story, and the way the GM facilitates the story, setting in order for the player character to drive the story. I really look forward to clicking on that playlist and watching the other videos in this series. And again, I'm stunned that YouTube didn't show me your channel before, but at least I'm here now. <laughs> All right. Well, number one, welcome aboard and welcome to the Elite Squad. Got Willie, I'm gonna be here for a little kind, just a little bit, just a little bit, because I got lots more where that came from. And I do look at this differently, hence the term RPG Elite, hence the whole philosophy. By the way, yes, I am working on an actual book of the RPG Elite philosophy. So all that you saw in that video, eh, just about, plus some extra, that's gonna be in the book. I look at this more than just a hobby, obviously. I look at this as an art form. That's how I approach it. And you want the most bang for your buck when you're doing that kind of thing, or you should. It's a whole different mindset. As I've said before, RPG Elite philosophy is a mindset and it's a high standard. And it's one that we RPG elites are striving for every time we sit down at the table and we want others to do the same thing so they could just get the marrow out of their experience and have a great time around the table. Let's get to our next comment. This one's from Steppa House from the video Top Secret 1E Fisticuffs Part 1. It said, bought this game in 84, I think, from my local hobby shop. It was right after I learned about the game that I refused to mention my name on this channel and thought this looked insane. Got it right before we went out of town for a couple of weeks that summer and I spent a lot of time reading and rereading the rule book. Got back excited to play and never, ever found anyone that wanted to. Tried again years later in high school, then college. Not once was I ever able to get a game together. Okay, number one, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad, it happens. And we didn't have the advent of things like virtual tabletops, which you have today. Now, if you're one of those people who's saying, oh man, I like to be in person. And I think all of us like to be in person to play these things. But as an RPG elite, okay, hold on now. You're going to have a very small sample of people to choose from if you're going to adhere to an RPG elite philosophy. Ergo, you should probably just take what you can get. And if that means virtually, then do it virtually. However, your boy servant is working on something for you for 2023, where people who are in the same position like Step of House, they had a game that they bought back in the day, wanted to play it, was all excited and never could find anyone to play. Where I'm working on something to where you guys can get hooked up, even if it's virtual. Listen, if you might like to play face to face and I get it, but if you can't find the good players face to face, but you can find them virtually, take it. Take the blessing and run with it. And I'm working on something to where you people who are in that same position can hook up with one another. And now, even though it might be virtual, you can still experience that game that you wanted to play back in the day. Oh, I told y'all, there's so much going on behind the scenes here, y'all. A brother is getting to it like Mike Pruitt. See, y'all don't even know what that's about. All right, let's go on to the next comment. 
From the video, The Lie of Race Representation, I think it might be racial representation, I think I might have changed that. Part one, Lando2846 says, you're not lying. I hope you cover in a future episode the it's not cool aspect, which I feel is also a big hurdle. I'm Hispanic, brought into the game table by Filipinos, Samoan, Arabic, and Negroes. Not one of us ever felt not represented. In fact, no one, I feel, played as if they were another race. We just were who we were. I do feel that a lot of people find it hard to play at first because they are embarrassed that they play or that they don't know how to play. Great content, keep it up. Y'all y'all are fantastic. You know what, you wanna know why? Cause you guys just keep the content ideas coming. Like for example, the content for this video is from you. The one thing that I don't have a problem with on my channel is, I wonder what I'm gonna do for a video. I, I never, ever, ever have to think about that. I don't, I have plenty of content and you guys just keep giving me more. And trust me, Lando, I am going to do that video. I don't know when, but that is a legitimate video. I'm gonna do it. Listen, I don't, I don't ask for content from gaming companies. So any content I get from them is because they somehow discovered me. And by the way, if you want me to cover a game, you want me to do a review, you want me to do a classic or something like that, then if the company is still around, go ahead and contact them. I don't contact companies. I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Y'all, I ain't got the time. <laughs> so if y'all want it, it's on you. I'm gonna leave that in your court. So, uh, Lando, man, y'all got all kinds of melanin at that table. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, that, that is, that's for real cool though. That's cool. But you, you play the game. That's kind of going to be my new thing that you'll hear me say on this channel. Listen, not bringing all that nonsense into it and just play the game. Next comment comes from Free League Publishing Cyborg RPG Review. And this is from Dan the RPG Hero 2885, who says even a bad TTRPG can have some good material inside it. I like to comb the 50% off stacks for source books from failed systems. You can ignore system specific stuff and recycle the setting, items, and encounter material. That's a little bit of a hack right there, y'all. And you can do that, you know? I just don't have the time to do that. Don't want to do that. Because there is a little bit of extra work and a little bit of extra money that I have to spend to go out and do that stuff and with what I do. But that is kind of a little bit of a hack right there, Dan. So not bad, not bad. I'll give you a thumbs up for that one. Let's go to the next comment. This next comment comes to us from Phil Lee, 427, RPG Elite quality number nine, RPG Elites take care of their game master. He says, glad that you got a UPB. And for those of you who don't know what a UPB is, is the ultimate powers book for Marvel Superheroes of Mance. And if you don't know what the big hubbub is about that, watch the video. Let's continue. But I am very surprised that you didn't have one at all that was the first book I ever purchased from Marvel. As far as the topic of taking care of one's GM, I echo the sentiment of an earlier reply. A good player will take care of their GM by being prepared and knowing their characters. I had a player in my Marvel game, as a matter of fact, who made decisions that made no sense and then I realized he wasn't actually paying attention. Well, see, that goes back to an RPG Elite philosophy video that I did talking about the kind of players that RPG elites won't play with. And we're not gonna play with people who are gonna waste our time on that. You're just not going to do it. Because if you're not here to play, because RPG elites, when we get at the table, we're there to play the game. See, I got another, <laughs> oh man, I got another video idea of a mantra that I hear throughout the tabletop RPG community all the time, as if it's some, Something that's, you know, oh, this is, this is the way it should be. Well, not for an RPG elite. 
And you guys have heard it many, many times, but I'm not gonna say it right now. I am going to save that for next year because that's the video that's gonna come up. But it's just people around the table that we won't play with, period. And so you might wanna screen your players a little bit better. Probably not gonna have that problem because again, RPG elites, we get together to play the game. And uh, going back to the, I didn't have it, it wasn't in my area. It wasn't in my area. And there was a whole bunch of other things that were going on at the time. And I was good with the photocopy. Like I said in the video, I had the photocopy, I was good, I was ready to go. I was always using the other guys, but it was nowhere, we only had like one store. And at the time, maybe, maybe yeah, it was only one store that actually carried it and didn't have it. And every time I would go, I'd be like, hey, can you get it? Hey, can you get it? Oh, we could try, we can try. And never did. So I had to go with what I had and I was cool with it. But uh, now I got my own. So what up? This one here is from Ashley Kendall, 3163, The Lie of Race Representation in Tabletop RPGs Part 2 is what this one is from. She says, you know, this got me thinking. I'm pretty sure you're the only black person who comes up in my feed who isn't blacksmithing or doing something else generally considered masculine. <laughs> I don't know what to <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay, listen, before I go any further, I'm not, I am, I love my masculinity, okay? Um, but I get what you're saying. Let, let me, let me give you a, something here. Masculine people are extremely comfortable with their masculinity. And they don't let anybody else define who they are being masculine. And this is a man thing. Nobody comes to me and tells me what I can and can't do, why I can and can't do it. And you can sit up there and make fun of me all day long. They won't do it to my face. Why? Because listen, there is the slight possibility, even being the person that I am, that a brother may lose his religion if you get on my nerves enough. So I have total confidence in who God has created me to be. I do what I feel that he is calling me to do because he's the one who defines my masculinity, not somebody else. There it is. Let's move on. And now we're coming to the last comment of the vid. This one from Philip Bernhardt, House 6907. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> says this, that's a fantastic story of an amazing gift. Beautiful. I have fond memories of the Marvel superheroes RPG back in the late eighties, early nineties. I only played a few times, but enjoyed it immensely and wish we could have played it more. As for me, unfortunately, I don't have any comparable stories to that. My previous group was pretty awful and thanked me for my efforts by pretty much ditching me as soon as they could. And one player in particular revolting on me the second time we played. My current group has only been able to play a few times thus far, unfortunately. And while they're better, some of them are not really respecting the rules thus far in terms of coming prepared or actually committing the necessary time to the game session. They're not a nightmare to deal with by any stretch of the imagination, but they're just not quite there yet with understanding how this is supposed to work. Two are old friends, one is a family member, a sibling, and as mentioned, we've only been able to play about four times this entire year. Yikes. Ouch. Unfortunately, due to conflicting schedules and the fact that we all live in different places, except for one of my friends, so scheduling is our biggest hurdle. Oh, I get it. That's why I'm RPG elite. <laughs> I'm not lying. I don't deal with this. I don't deal with this, bro. Being an RPG elite makes this go away. I don't deal with this at all. All of my players are solid. We were just talking about this in our last session. And we were talking about how my players, one player I think has been around for the a year and a half, almost two years now. That is the player who has been around for the least amount of time. 
There are others who have been in this campaign, and as you guys know, I, I run a the One Ring campaign, and I've been running that for years now. It's solid. Why? Because our be having the RPG Elite philosophy and adhering to it works. I do not have this problem. I just don't. Now I know you've got the scheduling thing and issues. I understand that, but that's some drama that is just draining on the spirit and on the soul. It takes away from even wanting to play. And you might be looking at a situation where maybe you just have to replace some people. Maybe. And it might be one of your siblings if they're the ones that's doing it. I don't know your whole situation. But obviously, if you want to have a better experience, then some decisions need to be made. Instead of wrangling with people, you could maybe have a sit down session to where you say, hey, here's the expectation. You can have another session where you can just kind of like go through things so that people can kind of get up to speed on how things are done. Session zero or less than. Then after that, then you guys can go and play. So there's a lot of different things that you could do. But the one that would always get you a great experience is by having great players. And go ahead and watch this video here on our, this RPG Elite philosophy on the players that we just won't play with as RPG Elites. There's two videos here. Your mileage is gonna vary, but I'm telling you, it works. It 100% works because I don't have this problem. I don't have your problem. And so if you don't want your problem, do this. <laughs> Well, thanks folks for hanging out with me. It's been great. We're getting close to the end of 2022. And of course I got a question of the vid for you. So we've had a great year this year. There's no doubt about it. But my question to you is why are you sticking around? Why are you sticking around RPG Elite? What makes you click the subscribe button and keep it clicked? I would love to hear what you guys say about that because I don't even think I've ever asked that question. You would think that that would be a question that would be asked. I've never asked that question. So let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. All right, y'all, that's it. If you like the video, you know what to do. YouTube algorithm love, baby. Hit that like button. And also, if you want to stick around and if this is your first time coming to the channel and you kind of like what you see a little bit, you want to try it out, then hit the subscribe button and also tap, tap it in, tap it. In. OK, kudos for anybody who knows what movie that's from. <laughs> tap that notification bell as well, folks. A brother is got to. So I'm going to catch you on the flip. And if you got a game, this week happy gaming and until the next time god willing folks i'm leaving you with a little something something go ahead and watch this video right there it's a little kind you know what i'm saying i'll leave you with something so until next time peace Five thousand leaps brother is out here